Greetings. In today's video, we'll discuss the conversion of a Hammond AO35 reverb driver into a really fine performing guitar amplifier. First, let's take a look at the outside of the cabinet. I sprung for some rather expensive lizard grain material for the front of this one. And I use the grill material. This is some of that uh, material or fabric that they use to upholster chaise lounges and deck chairs, which is darn near bulletproof and very inexpensive. A nice open weave. It's got a beautiful gold color. It's really great stuff. I highly recommend it. Go check at your fabric store and see if they don't have it. I thought I'd go with a bright contrast and I went with a red and black kind of marbled leatherette for the majority of the cabinet. And just to maintain that two-tone theme, I dyed the threads and the handle red so that we had the, still had the black and red motif here in the handle like we did in the rest of the amplifier. Now let's turn it around and take a look at the back. The cabinet on this one had to be fairly large to make room for the 12 inch speaker. Uh, the AO35 is a fairly powerful amplifier and I thought anything less than 12 inches would be sort of wasting it. Um, as you can see I've got the vent holes here for the heat. This one gives you access to the uh, cord and to the speaker jack, to your amp controls and the heat that rises can come out uh, through this vent. Let's pull off the back cover and see what's inside. Okay, here we have the back off and I think you can see right away one of the features of this amp uh, is this beautiful Jensen C12Q speaker from the eighth week of 1968 in absolutely mint condition. I just couldn't believe how nice this was. I found several of these in an old Ampeg a speaker cabinet. And I'm telling you, uh, if you go out and start buying these old beat up cabinets, you never can tell what you're going to find. It's like the pearl and the oyster. Uh, in this case, I really lucked out. Okay, we look down below and we have the little AO35 amp. Okay, first thing to notice whenever you're looking at a Hammond amp is the size and quality of the transformers they put in these. These, I think, are what make this whole thing a great buy. You can buy the entire chassis with tubes on eBay for around $100. They've gone up a bit because of the popularity of this conversion. But uh, you can get them, say, really nice ones for up to around $120. Well, these two transformers would probably cost you nearly that much to buy, so you're getting everything else essentially for free. Tube set, uh, 12AX7 preamp that's shielded, 12AX7 phase inverter, two 6BQ5s, which are among my all-time favorite output tubes, wonderful tone, great power, and a 5Y3 rectifier. Next, we look at the uh, things that had to be changed to make it a guitar amp. Uh, speaker jack right here uh, that goes up to that sweet, Jensen speaker. I can unplug it and plug in speaker cabinets, any other thing I want as long as it's 8 ohm. Um, the input jack for the guitar, volume, a tone, single tone, treble and bass combined, on a toggle pilot, and of course the three wire uh, cable. Now one thing that you really have to pay attention to and is really important is I have not seen this before, but when I put this all together, it occurred to me that these tubes put out a lot of heat and they're going to roast my wonderful old vintage Jensen speaker. So I put in a curved heat shield in the back so that the heat that comes from these tubes, and it is considerable, will be deflected outward, up, and then out that vent at the top of the back door. I highly recommend that you do this. Now there's three ways to place the chassis. You can do like I did and have the controls out the back, tubes at the front, uh, and then I really recommend the heat shield. I've seen others where the lineup of tubes is along the back. You cut out an opening in the speaker baffle and have your controls accessible there. There's no way you can have the tubes and the controls 
on the same side of the chassis simply because there's no room to put these in and wire them. The third possibility is, and this is probably the most common, is people do the conversion and then they just set the chassis out on a solid object, plug everything in and go to town. Uh, that's the simplest way to do it and most direct and you sure don't have any problem with uh, the tubes venting when the chassis is just sitting out in the open. So you have three possibilities. Uh, this is the one I chose because I thought, to be honest with you, it was the most attractive. I hope you agree. Well, there you have the, a look at the inside of the mighty Danasonic AO35 homemade uh, guitar amp conversion. Uh, let's button it up, put the back door on it, uh, and see how it sounds. I will tell you that this is an extremely powerful amplifier for such a small chassis. Uh, I was astounded and general, really have not really had much use for volume control to be above like three on this one. It's really powerful. I think also that the Jensen speaker is very efficient. So uh, let's take a look at that and see what you think. Also, no evaluation of a conversion like this would be complete without a look at the schematic that it was based upon. I'm going to place a link in uh, the description of this video that will uh, guide you to this schematic and also to another site that offers uh, a whole wide selection of tone control uh, circuits. I used one that's called the Moonlight Tone Control so right here, bear in mind that this amp uh, does not have a volume control or tone control the way it comes. It was uh, controlled by the uh, some sort of uh, switches or knobs at the organ itself. So you have to put them in. And right here, between the two stages of the preamplifier, the 12AX7, I inserted the volume control and tone control and it turned out absolutely great. Uh, this I really recommend this Moonlight Tone Control and like I said uh, if you look in the description for this video you'll find a link to that site. Everything else is pretty straightforward. Uh, if you look there are on this particular uh, schematic they give you suggestions on what to do. Number one, step two, step three, step four and I followed those directions and I got to tell you, it worked out really great. So this schematic will guide you through this conversion quite well. And now with the approval of Rusty the Wonder Dog, we will see what the AO35 sounds like. Rusty, are you ready to listen to some fine music? I can tell by that wagon tail that he is. Okay, for today's festivities, we'll leave the volume at around, I guess that'd be what, two and a half and the tone straight up, just neutral. Okay, here we go. This thing's got it all. Really good bass, uh, clear treble, a lot of power. It's down, that's like a two, and it's about as loud as I can stand to be close to.
happy note, Rusty and I will take leave of our evaluation of the mighty Hammond AO35 guitar conversion. I hope you liked what you saw and what you heard, uh, and that maybe some of you will be inspired to get on eBay and find one of these chassis and grab a couple schematics and get to work. I tell you, I've made a bunch of amps in my life, and this one is right at the top when it comes to uh, just volume, power, tone, everything. I'm just totally pleased with it. I think you would be too. So why don't you give it a thought? And regardless, uh, please stay tuned. Uh, I really appreciate the time that you take to watch these videos, and I always try to give you your money's worth. Okay, so I hope to see you soon. And uh, good luck.